Hello and welcome to Mobility Mastery Monday. I'm Alicia and this is your weekly source for the best tips and tools for pain relief and feeling unstoppable. Have you heard of the psoas? And if so, have you tried to release it? Today I'm going to give you a technique to release the fascia within the psoas and tell you why you probably don't need to. I'm going to make the case for leaving this muscle alone. So the psoas has probably gotten more hype and attention than any other muscle in the body for at least the last decade. Uh, and I've always wondered why. It's never instinctively felt uh, true to me that it deserves that much attention. Um, so I started kind of digging into why. Well, first of all, let me tell you what the psoas is. Now the psoas major um, is actually what most people refer to, but I think they're actually referring to both muscles, the iliacus and the psoas, which together are called the iliopsoas. And they're basically two conjoined muscles in our abdomen. Um, the psoas major is deep in the abdomen. Um, it attaches to the spine and then comes through the abdomen, um, joins up with the iliacus, which is um, right by our hip bone, and then both attach down um, at the top end of the femur. Uh, in the pelvis. The actions of the iliopsoas muscles are hip flexion or bringing the leg up um, or the femur, um, trunk flexion if you're in a supine position lying on your back, think of a sit up, so you're lying on your back and you're flexing your trunk towards your hips. Uh, it also does lateral rotation of the femur, it adducts or brings the thigh in or the femur in towards the body. Um, and it also, the psoas major specifically, does lateral trunk flexion, um, just think of a side bend. So after a lot of careful consideration, research, and working on clients over the last eight years, I've come to view the psoas as um, basically the body's insurance policy against pelvic instability, and also as the most adaptable muscles in the body. So let's explore this. Um, consider that all the actions of the psoas or iliopsoas are the primary actions of other muscles. So it's kind of my belief that the iliopsoas together are ancillary support for all these other muscles and the ones that will step in if something goes wrong with our pelvic stability, if we're in a uh, pelvic instability situation or possibly a low back pain pattern, I believe the brain will tell the psoas to tighten up um, in various ways since it's so adaptable um, to help keep our pelvis stable. It's been my experience over the last eight years of working with people uh, that the quad hip flexors are actually the most overactive, overworked um, muscles in the body. And I believe that they try to perform hip flexion um, for the psoas anytime we ask it to. Now the psoas might step in to help but most of the time, because we're such a quad dominant society and our quads are used to stepping in and working hard for us, they will try to do that in most hip flexion scenarios. So it's actually my opinion that the iliopsoas muscles are probably weak and inhibited in most of us because the quad hip flexors try to take over for performing the action of hip flexion. Okay, one of the other major movements or actions of the iliopsoas is that trunk flexion. Um, but it's my experience, and you could go ahead and test this, that most of the time when we do a traditional sit-up, which is the scenario in which that muscle is going to be activated and contract, we actually tilt our pelvis, tense up our quad hip flexors, engage our rectus abdominis, and even part of our throat, um, our SEM muscles, to pull us forward, not the iliopsoas. It's actually incredibly difficult to do a proper sit-up and use those muscles, and I'm not really a fan of sit-ups in general anyway, but it's my opinion that even that movement is not really using your iliopsoas, it's kind of more hip um, or hip flexors of the quad stabilizing you and then the rectus abdominis and all this front, uh, all these front muscles pulling you forward. While the psoas does assist with lateral rotation of the femur, it is not the primary mover of this action. That job belongs to sartorius and piriformis. Uh, most of you have probably heard of piriformis. Um, but also some of those deep internal lateral or external rotators of the hip. The iliopsoas muscles also assist or help with adduction or bringing the femur in back in towards the body. Um, but again, this job, the primary job, belongs to the adductor muscles as well as a few other supporting muscles. 
And last but not least, psoas major helps with lateral flexion of the vertebral column in the lumbar spine, but the main job of that action belongs to quadratus lumborum or your QL muscles, um, otherwise known as your low back muscles. Oh, uh, one of the little known but important functions of the psoas major is that it's actually a shelf for some of our internal organs um, that just kind of sit there. Uh, you know, that psoas major is really, really deep in the abdomen and on top of it or in front of it are our small intestine, um, our stomach, uh, part of the liver, <laughs> um, and you know, it's kind of a barrier between um, the organs and the spine. So I think that's actually one of its critical roles is to just kind of help support those organs and create a barrier between um, the front um, and then the spine. So considering that, um, most of the techniques that I have seen on the internet, and granted I haven't seen them all, um, but tell you if you want to release your psoas, and I'm using quotations because you'll maybe get why in a minute, um, they tell you to go a couple inches or two inches away from your belly button, um, and then maybe place a ball or a kettlebell or something there and let it sink in. And oftentimes this is extremely painful. Um, it's not pleasant at all, but uh, just Keep in mind, like you have a bunch of organs there, your rectus abdominis is in the way, there's abdominal fascia that is meant to create a barrier between you know, our stomach and our internal organs, it protects our organs, so um, that, uh, and then you have all your small intestines, so that psoas is like way behind all of those things, so it's my opinion that if that sucks or hurts, it's not your psoas actually that's tight, it's all the abdominal fascia um, within the rectus abdominis, the abdominal wall, and then your small intestine. So as I hope you can see from all of this uh, and the accompanying blog post, the iliopsoas muscles assist in a bunch of different movements, but they're really not the primary movers. Um, and I think they're meant to step in and help if any of those other primary movers are not functioning for whatever reason. And if the psoas is tight or appears tight, it's my opinion that your body has cashed in on its insurance policy and it's using those muscles to create pelvic stability where there is none. So if you're gonna go and release the muscle that's um, actually tight to protect you, then you've lost your protection and you're probably setting yourself up for more pain even if you get a little bit of relief or pain relief right after releasing it. Uh, I also feel like I need to address the fact that I've seen the iliopsoas blamed for flat back as well as sway back. Um, now a flat back would be, I can hardly do it because I have much more of a sway back, but a super flat back. Um, I've also seen it blamed on sway back. Uh, I've seen it blamed as the hidden cause of your low back pain. But I got to tell you, in eight years of doing the work that I've done, um, hundreds, maybe a thousand cases of low back pain, it's never once been the cause or um, what I needed to release to get them out of pain. And as it relates to that flat back and sway back, it's my opinion that there's so many other factors that could cause both of those that it's not appropriate to blame it on the psoas or iliopsoas specifically. So this brings us to a big question. What then is the major cause of pelvic instability that would cause your body to cash in on its insurance policy and get the psoas engaged to keep your pelvis stable? Now, it's been my experience that there are a lot of things that can contribute to pelvic instability, but the major number one cause is tight fascia in your quads, specifically on one side, um, creating a pelvic tilt or a shift to one side or possibly a rotation forward. Um, and that also will give the appearance of a tight so as potentially some people maybe diagnose it that way. So your best bet actually to relieve the uh, symptoms of whatever you think your psoas is causing if you're in pain is probably your quads, specifically your quad hip flexors. Uh, and I have a video for that, we will link to it today. And while that would be my number one pick for you, uh, other ones might be going after your adductors um, or your inner thigh. Uh, potentially going after, you know, if you're looking to go into the abdomen, um, focusing more on the abdominal fascia itself or the rectus abdominis um, and addressing that instead of trying to go so deep back into the psoas that you're aggravating your organs and not even really touching your psoas. Now I am going to give you a technique that you can try for your psoas. It would mimic what I do with my private clients and almost all of them 
um, my clients that I've worked on who've come into my office and told me, I have a tight psoas, I know I do, I know it's the root of all my problems, I do this technique on them, and it's not really that tight. Um, so if you try this and it is on you, then maybe you have some fascia there that needs to be released. But for those of you who just want to satisfy your curiosity and learn for yourself whether it is or isn't tight, I am going to give you a technique with the caveat or warning that you're going to be far better off going after these other things first um, and seeing what kind of result you can get with those before you go to this technique and try to release your psoas. Okay, so you're going to need a kettlebell for this technique. Um, I have a 15 pound kettlebell here. You could use an 18 pound, a 20 pound. You don't want one with a too giant of a handle. This is about perfect. Um, but you do want some weight to it. A 5 pounder uh, or even maybe a 10 pounder isn't going to be quite enough. Um, and what we're actually going to be targeting here, just to be clear, if there's anything to be released in this area, it's my opinion that it's actually the fascia between the iliacus and the psoas specifically. Um, most of the time in my experience, the tightest fascia or the fascial restrictions in our body happen at muscle junctures where one muscle group meets another um, and they can kind of get stuck together and then not glide as easily. So if there's anything to be released there, it's going to actually be at the junction between both. So I won't actually be going um, where, where we talked about earlier, two inches away from the belly button, trying to get way back into the abdomen to get at psoas major. We're actually going to target where they meet. So we're actually going to use the handle side and target right kind of next to that iliac crest of the pelvis, um, going a little bit, I've kind of targeted uh, a little bit higher and a little bit lower. So I'm not going totally low down, that's gonna hit my pelvic um, bone down there. Um, so, and you're just gonna kinda wedge it in there. It might feel a little bit tender, it might not. Um, and then you're gonna flex your feet. And so I'm on my left one, so I'm gonna bend this left knee up slowly. This is, again, hip flexion, so it's gonna contract the iliopsoas and then we're going to try to stretch it out with movement. So you're going to do knee, drop your knee to the floor. And if you can get as far as I can, you do not have a tight psoas. <laughs> um, if you can only get maybe to here and it's extremely tight or painful, then maybe you actually have a tight psoas. But like I said before, it's probably not the cause of your pain. So if it actually is tight, I would highly recommend going after those other muscles first and then see if your psoas relaxes. Um, and goes back to its neutral state as your insurance policy and helper. Um, so I'm going to bring the knee up, extend a little bit, rotate down, bring it up, extend a little bit more, rotate down, maybe do four or five of these. And then on the last one, you're just going to push through the heel. And then if you wanted to add one, just kind of like frog leg motion, what I usually do with my clients and that's about it and that's a wrap on how to release the psoas and why you probably don't need to I would really love to hear from you because I'm sure this is bound to be a semi-controversial topic there are so many people out there that swear by releasing the psoas um, so I'd love to know your experience did you try the technique is your psoas actually tight did you try the hip flexor release first for the quads um, yeah come talk to me uh, here on YouTube on mobilitymastery.com or on Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe on mobilitymastery.com for updates via email that you won't find anywhere else. And I will see you next time on Mobility Mastery Monday.